the Sky with FNN, Feminist News Network, the feminist news that's right for you. Coming to you today in the studio. So, I'm bringing this to you because I got tired of hearing about it. And what do I have to talk about? Trump. The world is laughing at America. This is an ugly, ugly thing because it's not funny. We have a literal racist, xenophobic, white nationalist that has come to the UN to talk about I'm America, we're so best, I, I did the best ever. Trump, this is why they're laughing at you. Even your own VP and Nikki Haley were laughing. I'm, I'm, I'm just so over this era of hate, I do not know what to do. Mm, mm, mm. Now, let's take a look at Democracy Now!'s coverage of his UN speech and then take a look and discuss. But on Tuesday, as he addressed the United Nations General Assembly, many of the world's leaders laughed at him when he boasted of his administration's accomplishments. In less than two years, my administration has accomplished more than almost any administration in the history of our country. America's so true. <laughs> Didn't expect that reaction, but that's okay. Trump later said his comment was, quote, meant to get some laughter, so it was great. During his address, Trump assailed the International Criminal Court, accused Venezuelan President Nicolás Maduro of corruption, and announced new sanctions against members of Maduro's inner circle. And he accused Iran of sowing, quote, uh, chaos, death and destruction across the Middle East. Iran's leaders sow chaos, death and destruction. They do not respect their neighbors or borders or the sovereign rights of nations. Instead, Iran's leaders plunder the nation's resources to enrich themselves and to spread mayhem across the Middle East and far beyond. We cannot allow the world's leading sponsor of terrorism to possess the planet's most dangerous weapons. We ask all nations to isolate Iran's regime as long as its aggression continues. And we ask all nations to support Iran's people as they struggle to reclaim their religious and righteous destiny. The UN is not a Trump stop. This is not a campaign stump and speech that you need to make. This is not your raucous, I'm tired of being sh shoved down with no job and all the Mexicans and the blacks must have took it from, away from me crowd. Do you even know how to be a leader? And then gonna laugh at itself and say that's what he wanted. You know you that ain't what you wanted. Your constant beret of lies is bringing America down. Your rationale to systemically hold down a whole majority of minorities that will soon be taking over America and you cannot take it and you gonna let the white nationalists and the racists and your stubbornness bring it all down in a hell of fire before you give America a chance. You're wrong. Pence, Nikki Haley trying to hold it back. Germany, France, everybody, and if they weren't laughing, they were shaking their heads in dismay. 
all saying, what has America come to? Is this what America is about now? Now you have a, a world of people feeling sorry for us. And with the action that has been taken with the big four, Britain, Germany, France, and China, finding their own financial ways to get around the U.S. sanctions so they can continue doing business with Iran. If the dollar isn't ready to drop, just wait for that bubble. Because when they find out that they can do that, they're going to do more. Don't think China isn't mad. Don't think the rest of Europe isn't upset over these sanctions that they have done with China and Iran. They're fucking around and messing with too many things. Cars, steel, and aluminum. And they're chasing the oil. You know all of these ports that surround the Strait of Hormuz have all been attacked. They all want it for Saudi Arabia so they can get through that little bitty narrow waterway. So they can have that open Arabian Sea all to themselves. So they can ship the oil back and forth to the U.S. So they can just take it. Did we not forget what General Wesley Clark said? Let's take a look. But this government, our administration, wanted to worry about Iraq, not Iran. I, I knew why, because I'd been through the Pentagon right after 9-11. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to... Come in, you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq? Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq, and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said well, don't show it to me. And I saw him a year or so ago, and I said, you remember that? He said, sir, I didn't show you that memo. I didn't show it to you. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say his name was? <laughs> I'm not going to. So they couldn't get him in five years. But I guess after 20, they are ready to get Iran now. What's really going on with the Pentagon? It doesn't matter to president. It's about their plan. Let's tell the truth. And it's getting deeper and uglier by the minute. Now, what needs to happen is more than just action. We need to tell our congressmen they need to get up there and start filibustering to make sure it doesn't happen. 
What's in, don't they need an act of Congress in order to have a war? Why is all of a sudden all these secretive things are going on? Why do we need a base permanently in Syria as mentioned this week? Era of hate going strong. Now, we need to get our politicians to stand behind this deal and not pass it through like they did this, the military budget. Dems need to stand up for a better, brighter America. All this establishment coup takeover that we are going through because it is not the America we know, people. Not when we're getting laughed at and treated this way and mistreated upside down, inside out like this. Now, we need solutions. We need answers. And what is the solution and the answer to all of this? Wait and see. Europe knows what to do. They're dancing around it right now. And if America is going to fall hard, it's going to fall. In the hands of those that need not get it back. Because once they lose this, maybe we can start again and create a better America with the minority, majority, to at will take over. Why America and this administration is bound and determined to bring us into a third world war is beyond me. But believe me, Europe will not be on our side. The UN is disgusted by our actions. And not us, but Trump. Take better care of America. Let your congressmen know. Don't give up the fight. Don't stop protesting. And don't stop filibustering. We need more Medea Benjamins out there to let them know. All right. And if you agree, contact me at feministnewsin at gmail.com. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. And don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, Feminist News Network. The subscribership is growing. We're ready to get our 72 hours of Wacky Key Tattoo Confessions. 20-year master at work giving pearls of wisdom. So, I want to say thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. Peace.